The holidays are here. Ian, have you made your wish list yet? Have you done that? Our sponsor today has the number one wish for gift of the year, Manscaped. The best in men's below and above the belt grooming. Manscaped is here to ensure you're taking care of your manhood and your nose hairs with their new performance package. You are in luck because the Manscaped performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle and makes for the perfect gift. Included in the package is the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, which is waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. That's Woo! some tech to get up in, in there. Wow. Yeah. That is a mouthful. The bundle includes the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer as well, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body, the three Bs. Let's not forget <laughs> their famous liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to maximize your hygiene routine. Get the performance package now to receive those two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bags. Nice, nice, nice bag to throw it all in there. All right, now, Here's a special offer. You get 20% off and free shipping with code CU podcast at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using code CU podcast. What are you waiting for? Holidays are here. You can gift to other people, to yourself. You can gift. Go whack your weeds. Make Santa proud. All right, Ian. Yeah. The Xbox Series X and S are, are out right now. They're out. You can buy them if you can get past the freaking scalping bots and organizations that are flaunting the fact that are bought. They're buying thousands of these things with scalping bots, and you can uh, you could you can play the the, the 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 games that the kids like. But you can also with this is news. You can turn your Xbox Series X or S into an emulation machine via the console's developer mode. This could be an interesting uh, uh, development, speaking of developer, uh, that's that, uh, been unleashed here. So as it says here in this Ars, Ars Technica article, the installation vector here comes not through an unforeseen security hole, but through Microsoft's policy of allowing any retail Xbox One console to become a full-fledged dev kit. Um, they promise that functionality in... Uh, 2013, there were signs that Microsoft was thinking of abandoning those plans. In 2014, though, they officially opened up the Xbox One, allowing registered Universal Windows platform uh, UWP developers to load and test content directly onto a stock retail console. Um, so, uh, as is confirmed, so that uh, and Libretto, which decided in late 2018 that it would commit to creating an Xbox One compatible. Universal Windows platform build of its popular emulator package. That's RetroArch. This version launched in alpha in 2019 and has been updated sporadically since. They have confirmed that the new build works on the Xbox Series S, Series X as well, allowing your new console to pretend to be anything from an Atari 2600 to a Wii with a whole lot of consoles in between. So basically, you uh, you pay a one-time $19 fee with, with register. You register your, your Xbox account to be a developer account through Windows Dev Center portal. 19 bucks, that's it, one time fee. And now that opens up the uh, dev mode activation app in the store. System will guide you through a few steps to link the consoles. So you link the console to your dev account, making that console basically a dev console. Uh, you may have to download some updates, blah, blah, blah. And after that point, you, you, load, you load on RetroArch and, 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 you're, and you're good to go. Yeah. They, they've, been, they've been planning this, obviously. This is... Um, I don't say it's incredible, but when you look at the, like everything, people are trying to make all these emulation machines right now, and people, Atari VCS costs three to four hundred dollars for the freaking Atari VCS. Um, you have you have that. When you have something that only costs, if you want, you get three hundred dollars for the Series S. That's fair. Super powerful, super powerful. That can emulate probably anything you want to throw on it. That's a tempting little little ditty. Uh, I mean, I think it is because so uh, one last caveat is so Xbox console in development mode won't want run any retail Xbox games other on disc or download, but you can switch back and forth between the two modes. It simply has to reboot. So you know, it's not like it's in, it's it, it's not like this is plug and play. But neither are a lot of emulation consoles or no. emulation boxes. No. You're going to have to do tinkering with something like an Atari VCS to get it to do that. And so why not do it? Mode. Yeah. Why not do it with this cheaper? Why not do it with a more powerful console that can play 
Xbox games on top. Sure. So yeah, I mean it's 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 neat to see this as possible. Um, yeah, it just harkens back to we've come from people getting the original Xbox and modding it to be its own emulation machine, you know, and now it's like I'm I'm sure Xbox, even if they know they they know about this, Microsoft they don't they don't care. It's like well whatever, do do whatever you want. You bought our freaking hardware, you're probably gonna buy it. I I can't imagine someone buying this just to do the emulation, but it wouldn't be the worst choice to do it based upon how powerful this is. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, if, 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 they, if they emulate, if they manage to have, like, you know, maybe a solid in the future, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. A fucking PS4 emulator. Throw it on your Xbox S. You know, like... That's what, like, not going to happen. I'm just saying, though, like, I'm just thinking about, like, if it's, if it's powerful enough to run probably anything you throw at it, it's the most powerful emulation device you can probably get is, is the, this Xbox. You're never going to see PS4 emulation on there. You, you, be, be, why? Because they couldn't do PS4 emulation at some point. Because it's be not, fun. it's not strong enough. The amount, the, the, you need to have exponentially more power to run something like that. You are not going to see PS4 emulation on an Xbox One S. Okay, maybe or an three. Xbox Series S. Maybe a three you can get on there, or an, not even on the X. You could, you, you don't think? It'd be to to, I it would depend. To run an emulator like that, it would be tough. I think it would it would choke the system. It would choke the system too much. But we'll see. But the uh, point is that this is the most powerful emulation device you can get. Modern Vintage Gamer says they put the 299 Series S through its emulation paces. They found some of the very best emulation that they've seen on a console. Yeah. So. Oddly or not, it's, 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 it's powerful. Um, this becomes more and more tempting to me, this, this $300 Series S, the more I see it, I'm more like, huh, this, this could be something. M- Three hundred dollars versus five is that's a that's a that's a jump for a, a lot of people that they they could they can justify that uh that price here. So maybe this will be uh this will this will pick up for the scene because yeah they don't even have a working PlayStation Two core on RetroArch yet. Oh, they don't. No, but a PS2 emulator it has to exist though, doesn't it? Not not a particularly good one. It's right now it yet. looks like GameCube, Wii, Saturn in development, and PSP uh, run fairly well. And PS1, probably, right? Sure. That's right. PS1 was running on a fucking Bleem 20 years ago. I saw the box in my, in my garage. Or the other week, I found my Bleem... Oh, I found my Bleem disc the other week. But uh, the the thing that's really most interesting to me about this is it, re- it harkens back to the days of the original Xbox. There was a period in time where even after the 360 was out, people still wanted original Xboxes because they were hackable and people yeah. turned them into fairly capable media centers and emulation devices and they saw a huge lifespan beyond just their original shelf life and i could see that definitely happening with especially i think the series s because it's it's cheap enough um you know it's the right entry price i don't think anyone's going to necessarily go out of their way to do this with the series x but they could though sure like like it's it's just an extra bonus but that's all so like when i see this i'm like all right Get a game pass and play play some modern games and you can have your emulation machine. Now you don't have the four controller ports like you had in the cute little OG Xbox for those four player, you know, mm-hmm. Turtles and mm-hmm. Time Arcade games. But you know, you, you wire up some controllers, you get some Bluetooth stuff, and, and there there you have it. Um, the developers at, at Lib Retro, Live Retro, I guess it's Lib Retro, will continue to update Retro Arch and its underlying cores as time goes on, of course. So new advancements in emulation technology should make their way to the Xbox UWP. Right now, the team seems close to getting PS2 emulation core, PSX2, P- PCSX2 into workable shape, which would be a bit ironic considering that, that PS2 games are not natively compatible with the PS5. Damn you, Sony. Why not? Because we want to resell you this shit or put it on a service. So, there you go. I'm getting close, Reen. I think I might take the, I might take the, the modern plunge again uh, next year uh, for the Series S. Or at that point, you might as well just go for the five hundred dollar version. But I don't have to have a fucking four K TV, so it's like, who cares? I'm not going to see most of the benefits. Ah, but you get the you get the, the discs. But discs don't matter on modern games as much anymore, anyway. 